All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this wonderful Friday morning. As you sure you've heard a lot of the news this morning about like Trump and whatever, and you know a lot of stuff going on. But we're not here to talk about Donald Trump. We're here to talk about personal real estate corporations, which is something that was um, in the news a lot yesterday. Right. So I'm sure, uh, as far as I'm aware, there should have been emails sent from Aurea, Rico, Treb, a ton of uh, different organizations in real estate who are trying to make you aware about personal real estate corporations. And basically in our webinar, we are here to uh, in, give you an idea as to what these regulations are about and what basically a PREC is. And we're going to go over some tax stuff and then we'll get into the regulations in, in a little more depth uh, from the perspective of accountants. Uh, I'm just going to add two more people here. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, so um, I'm not going to uh, talk too much. So as I said, my name is Stephen Petucci. I am a CPA and Neil is also a CPA. We are both partners of RealtyTax.ca, which is an all-in-one tax solution for Ontario realtors. So I'm going to move to the next slide. Sorry, just having a technical issue here. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll pass it off to Neil and uh, he'll take it away. Okay, so first of all, if anyone has questions during the presentation, just type them into the chat and we'll, uh, we'll answer them as we go. And we'll also leave time at the end for questions as well. And we can unmute everyone's mics at the end if you want to ask questions then as well. So just as an introduction, um, Stephen and I have started RealtyTax.ca and to specialize in providing an all-in-one solution for Ontario Realtors. We both have experience running our own practices uh, too many years of experience. Um, Steven is really good at um, transitioning all of his clients to cloud-based accounting solutions, which is much more efficient than the old style. And I'm very outspoken about the insane complexity of our tax system. I actually just wrote this book, The Grumpy Accountant, which I hope a million Canadians buy and uh, will hopefully make a difference in terms of tax policy to simplify the system. I really think uh, the job of a tax accountant should actually not exist when you think about it. Like I should not have a job doing this, uh, but for now we still do, but it's very frustrating as I'm sure you all know your frustrations with our tax system. So that's why I wrote the book to help simplify it. Um, but we're also going to help make things easier for you guys. And that's what this webinar is about to show you everything you need to know about Prex, how it will benefit you. Uh, so let's get right into it. Stephen, go to the next slide here. So just as a background, this legislation has passed, like it's official now. Um, and as of yesterday, October 1st, the Real Estate and Business Brokers Act was amended and these regulations were now finally released. Yes, they were just released yesterday, allowing realtors to incorporate what they're calling a PREC, personal real estate corp incorporate corporation. Um, this has actually existed in British Columbia for over 10 years. And in Ontario, uh, RICO and OREA, uh, your professional lobbying organizations have been lobbying for this for years, for over a decade. Uh, they've been lobbying the government to allow this to happen. And when you think about it logically, um, everyone else seems to be allowed to incorporate plumbers, electricians, and doctors, and lawyers, accountants, dentists, I mean, uh, dog walkers, pretty much everyone. And it seems like realtors were the only people who weren't allowed, uh, but finally you will be allowed. So what is the main advantage of this? Everyone wants to know, should you do this or should you not? What's the benefit? The main tax advantage, okay, that's what we're going to focus on today tax advantage is this, what we call a tax deferral. Okay. Tax deferral means when you leave money in your PREC, the profit in your PREC is taxed at a very low rate, 12.2%. This 12.2% rate is so low. I have US, uh, U.S. citizens as clients. Some of my clients are U.S. citizens and I have to deal with um, their U.S. accountants. And in the U.S., the U.S. tax accountants when they hear about this 12.2% 12, 12 tax rate, they're in shock. They can't believe it because they don't have such a low small business rate there. So um, this is really a huge benefit 
because Stephen, go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, the reason is because if you compare the, pers the personal tax rates, as you all know and have experience with, are very high. In Ontario, the top tax rate, if you have income above $220,000, every dollar above two twenty dollars is taxed at 53.4%. So if you compare that to 12.2%, you could see where the savings come in. And I'll show you examples. But even if your income is $80,000 a year, or $100,000, or $120,000, or even $70,000, uh, there's still a big advantage because your personal tax rates, even above 60, 70, 80, 90,000, are still much higher than the 12.2%. Um, so there will be an advantage if you leave money in your PREC. So the general rule is, okay, so yeah, let's look at this example here. Um, let's say you have $75,000 of profit from your commission income, okay? And right now, your, your total tax bill on that, because you're self-employed, you don't have a corporation. So all of your $75,000 of profit is taxed personally, okay? And your total tax bill will be $21,000. That includes CPP. Remember, right now, self-employed, you have to pay employer plus employee portion of CPP. So that comes out to about $5,800 plus the personal tax of about $15,000 on $75,000 of profit. So your total bill is $21,000. Now, what a PREC allows you to do, one advantage is, you can say, you know what? I don't want to pay into CPP. I don't believe in Canada Pension Plan for whatever reason, and I'll talk about that in a minute. You might decide you want to avoid CPP and save that money. You can now pay a dividend because you're a shareholder of your PREC, your corporation. You can pay a dividend instead of a salary. And the dividend, this will save you in total, you can see in this example, almost $3,000. That's just in one year. Remember, these savings are every year because you don't have to pay the CPP. So the general rule here is every dollar of profit you earn in the PREC, you can choose what to do with it. You can leave it in the PREC and have it taxed at 12.2%, or you can withdraw it as a salary or as a dividend, or even a combination of salary and dividend. And that way you can realize, um, you could realize tax savings by minimizing the amount you withdraw from the PREC. Let's look at the next slide. This will explain salary versus dividend. Every single one of our clients who's a small business owner who operates through a corporation must choose whenever you withdraw money from your PREC, remember that is taxable income. You have to show that personally on your tax return, but you can choose salary or dividend. So if you choose a salary, you get a T4 slip and you must pay into CPP. Now, some people actually like that because CPP, it's like forced savings. Um, and some people aren't disciplined enough to save money on their own. So they'd rather, you know what, I'll force myself to pay into CPP. The government will do it for me. And CPP is actually fully indexed to inflation and it's fully funded. It's not like in the US, their social security isn't really fully funded. The CPP is actually managed completely separate from government funds. So whichever government is in power, if you don't like them, they can't raid the CPP and start using it for whatever they want. It's a completely separate fund managed separately. Also, when you pay a salary, you're, you're able to contribute to your RRSP. So, which is very beneficial for higher income people. As I'm sure a lot of you are aware how RRSPs work, um, you, if you pay a dividend, you don't get to contribute into your RRSP. So if you wanna do CPP and RRSP, you must pay a salary. Now, some people on the other hand, they don't care about CPP, they don't care about RRSP. They'd rather save the money themselves, invest themselves. And um, some people also don't like the fact that you're self-employed, you pay double CPP. You pay employer plus employee portion. So you'd rather pay a dividend, no CPP at all, save the money yourself. So there's a nice advantage there. That, 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 what I'm trying to show here is the PREC gives you, the PREC gives you this nice flexibility. So let's keep going. Remember, feel free if you have questions, you could just add them into the chat and we'll answer them as we go. And we'll also leave time at the end. So this is a, another example here. And what this example shows is the significant potential tax savings from having a PREC. So let's just say, for example, you're a realtor, you earn $300,000 of profit in commission income, so a higher income realtor. Um, remember, that's after expenses. But you don't need $300,000 
of money for your personal living for the year. Maybe you only need a hundred thousand. Okay. So without a prec, it doesn't matter that you only need a hundred thousand. Without the prec, that entire three hundred thousand dollars is your personal income. You don't have a choice, and you pay personal income tax of one hundred twenty-two thousand plus the CPP. So you have a big tax bill, almost one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. That's without the prec. But now with the prec, if you only need one hundred thousand dollars for personal use, you only withdraw one hundred thousand from the prec, and that's your salary. And you have a much lower overall tax bill now, as you can see on the slide. I'm not going to read it out. But this basically saves you seventy-four thousand dollars in this example, and that's just in one year, seventy-four thousand. So if you do that for five years, seventy-four times five, what is that? I don't know, three hundred fifty thousand dollars or something, or uh, or, or more, three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. There's a down payment, or there's your next investment property, um, and we'll get into how to how to um, take further advantage of those after-tax savings. So, Stephen, keep going here. What basically, just to summarize that, the more money you earn, the higher income you are, the more advantage you will receive from this, the more benefit you'll have. But even if your income is, let's say, one hundred fifty thousand a year, and you don't need one hundred fifty thousand a year to live off of, maybe you only need eighty thousand or seventy-five thousand or ninety thousand. The leftover you leave in the prec, you only pay twelve point two percent. Okay, and then. Um, you'll be able to invest that after-tax money without the big personal tax hit. That's the big advantage. So the regulations that just came out yesterday, unfortunately, some of the wording in these regulations is still very unclear. And this is my beef in general with the entire Income Tax Act. Um, there's a lot of um, gray area. So here's what here's the most, in my opinion, the most important. Part of the regulation, it says all of the equity shares of the corporation of the PREC are legally and beneficially owned directly or indirectly by the controlling shareholder. So this means the controlling the PREC must be owned 100% by the real estate agent by the realtor. No one else can own the equity voting shares. Okay, but here, but here's the thing: what does indirectly mean? Does that mean you could set up a holding corporation, and you can own a hundred percent of a holding corporation, a hold co, and then the hold co can own a hundred percent of the prec? So, um, and the prec earns the real estate income, but then the prec, let's say you want to invest money within your prec, or you want to buy a property within your prec. The rules don't actually really allow that. Um, so what you have to do is take the money out of the prec. But you don't want to pay personal tax, so you take pay a tax-free dividend to your hold co, and then in your hold co, uh, you can invest money, purchase real estate, and that's where there's this big, huge tax advantage, this tax deferral, because you're not taking that personal tax hit. So let's go to the next slide. I'll show you how this works. On the left side, where it's just that's the simple example. Ontario Realtor. So you hold 100% of shares of the hold co, which owns 100% of shares of the prec. So that's the example I just described. Now, in this other example here with like the little triangle, what this allows you to do, this is the more common structure that they use right now in British Columbia, because it's not so clear if the example on the left will actually be allowed. It seems like it will be, but we have to wait and see um, for some clarification. But even if that's not allowed, what you can do is you're allowed. Um, the hold co can own non-voting, like preferred shares, a different class of shares of the prec. So you, the realtor, will own a hundred percent of the voting equity common shares of the prec. But then the prec can issue preferred shares or another class of shares, non-voting, to the hold co, and you own the hold co. And that way, the prec could still pay out money to the hold co. So this is a very nice loophole that they built into the system to allow you to take advantage of this nice tax deferral. Okay, let's keep going here. Um, Stephen, did you want to take over here? Or do you want me to keep going? I forgot what you said. Um, how about actually just the next few slides, and then I'll get into the RICO stuff. Okay, so we'll continue with the regulations. Here's a nice, very nice other benefit, where fam here's a big question that people always ask: Can a family member be a shareholder of the prec? Because that might provide a very nice 
opportunity to do what we call income splitting, which is always in the news. So the regulations actually say word for word, we quoted it here, each non-equity share of the corporation, okay? So just like the whole co can own a, a different class of shares that are non-voting, non-equity, well, maybe the PREC can issue shares to a family member. Each non-equity share of the corporation is legally and beneficially owned directly or indirectly by a family member of the controlling shareholder, which can mean a spouse or a child who's 18 years old or over. Now, if you have a spouse that's a shareholder or an adult child over 18 years old, and let's say they have zero personal income or they have minimal personal income, well, maybe you could pay them a dividend from your corporation. Now, and that, that could provide uh, some very nice tax savings each year which adds up over time. Now, there are federal government rules called TOSI, T-O-S-I, Tax on Split Income. These were introduced in 2017 by the current government, and they are an extremely complicated, horrible, really poorly written piece of legislation um, that might actually limit your ability to do this. But even with those, within those TOSI rules, you have to stay on side. There is still a way to do it. If the spouse or adult child or adult family member worked more than 20 hours or worked at least 20 hours a week for you uh, and contributed time into the PREC, there might still be a way to pay a dividend. So those complicated rules, like we would discuss with each realtor and, and you know, figure out their own personal tax situation to see the, the most beneficial structure. And of course, by st and we have to stay on side with the regulations. Just a few more regulations they released yesterday. The PREC cannot really do anything else other than trade and real estate, okay? So you can't, um, you can't decide to open a dog walking business and, and use your PREC to realize that income. You could really own, it's only for the real estate income. Now, the, the, the shareholder of the PREC, the agent, you have to be employed by a brokerage. And there might be a tax issue if you're already an actual employee of a brokerage. Because right now, um, <clears throat> most of you, I assume, are self-employed independent contractors. You get a T4A, you charge HST. If you're an employee of a brokerage, then it might be a problem. Uh, we have to talk to you individually. So don't open your PREC yet if you're an actual employee. Also... The PREC is an Ontario corporation, provincial. Okay, so you can't call your PREC Canada Inc. or Canada Limited or anything. It's an Ontario corporation. Okay, so that's just, just to keep in mind when you actually name your PREC. There also must be, this is an important part of just the, the like kind of the bureaucracy, the bureaucratic process of how this will work. You have to have a written agreement. And the written agreement is between you, the agent, shareholder of the PREC, and the PREC and the brokerage. So there's three parties to the agreement because remember the PREC as a corporation, the corporation is a separate legal entity. It's its own entity, right? It files its own tax return called a T2, corporate tax return. Um, so the written agreement is between these three parties. And here's the, just the bullet points here in the slide. You could read them. This must be in the written agreement. And we're assuming that RICO will come out with some sort of template that, that you can use, right? Um, and that will be forthcoming, I'm sure, in the coming days. Um, but this is just, it's just basically saying that you, you, the PREC and the brokerage and the broker cannot hinder each other from performing all their duties. It, it's just, you know, just kind of legal, uh, um, legal uh, wording in, in the agreement. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, Neil, thank you. I'll, I'll take over uh, now at this point because I think you want a break. <laughs> Um, now, keep in mind is that, you know, they did release the regulations, as Neil was talking about. However, RICO has also given a lot of clarifications on these actual regulations. And as we know, the Real Estate Council of Ontario is the regulator for brokerages and brokers and salespeople. So the first thing that I think was a, a major question is, okay, does this PREC have to be now registered with RICO? The answer is no. So unlike a salesperson, broker, or brokerage, you do not need to have registration with RICO. However, the registrant must notify RICO of three things. The name of the registrant, so that would be like the shareholder of the PREC. Uh, the legal name of the PREC, which I'll get into in a second about names. And the address uh, 
um, of the uh, PREC before that PREC receives any money from the brokerage. And what they're doing is funny. They actually gave a simple instruction. Send these three things to this email address. <laughs> Registration at vco.on.ca. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, also, they've clarified a PREC cannot be a brokerage. So if let's just say you are an agent and you said, well, I already set up a brokerage. Can I now turn it into a PREC? The answer is, um, you could technically convert it later on, but you can't do it inside your brokerage. Okay, so you can't just say all of a sudden, okay, my brokerage is now a PREC, not allowed. You have to have a separate corporation to do that. Okay. Um, also, uh, brokerages are not obligated to sign agreements with PRECs. So if you're having an interaction with your brokerage, and let's just say for whatever reason, your broker of record saying, yeah, I don't want to do this agreement with the PREC, technically, as the agent, unfortunately, you do not have recourse against that. So just something to keep in mind. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume a lot of brokerages will want it anyway, but just again, for the legality behind it, uh, there is real no obligation on the actual brokerage. Okay. A um, couple of important things here. Um, as I was saying, you can't run a brokerage as a PREC and you can't actually run a PREC like a brokerage. So what that means is that you do not need to have a trust account, nor is it allowed to hold any deposits in trust as a brokerage does. Okay. Um, next point here, groups and teams. So as we know, a lot of real estate agents, they work in groups or teams or they use various names. Um, however, the question is, let's just say if a brokerage is now paying commission to a team, could you do it through a PREC? And the answer is no. So basically the way how it is right now, the PREC can only have one single controlling shareholder who's a registrant broker or salesperson. Um, so what that means is that if the PREC is going to accept remuneration, it has to be, I'm uh, sorry, if that team is going to accept remuneration from the brokerage, it has to go to each individual agent's PREC. So each agent in that group must have a PREC or they can remain unincorporated right now. Another thing about advertising, this one was kind of interesting because in British Columbia, they did it a bit differently. So they're saying that the public cannot be made aware that a PREC trades in real estate. Okay, so what that basically means is you cannot say, oh, I have, you know, if you're using your advertising, you can't say like John Smith PREC or have your big advertising saying, uh, you know, whatever name you're using for your corp. That is technically, um, you, 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 like basically Rico saying you cannot use that. However, the flip side of it is, is that they are, they're not giving any naming restrictions on that actual personal real estate corporation. So the only thing you would be restricted to, of course, is just whatever would fall under provincial law. So as you know, as we, we can get into later, when you incorporate a, 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 a provincial corporation, you have to do what's a nuanced search. So you have to see, has that corporation name being used in any way? So, uh, or if there's any linkages to other corporations. So um, that's a restriction on the advertising name, but as far as the, um, that, that's really the only thing. Okay, uh, next point here. Um, some people, and actually some realtors have asked me this question. Well, I already have another corporation. Uh, I set it up for something that's non-real estate related. Can I use it now as a PREC? So I was actually kind of surprised in Rico's response on this. They actually are allowing it. However, the condition we got to keep in mind here is that if now your other company, whatever it was doing, corporations, let's say, if you have a corporation, whatever it was doing, if it's now becoming a PREC, you got to meet all those, reg, you know, the, all those conditions that exist in the regulations that we talked about. For example, the uh, registrant must be the sole shareholder. The spouses or adult children must be non-voting shareholders, right? So if you don't have that structure uh, in your other corporation, it's not a good idea to have this. Um, have to, it's not a good idea to have your PREC as, now as that corporation because it, it would basically force you to become a registrant under RICO's rules. So what we recommend, and as accountants, we have a lot of favoritism in this, do not mix your PREC with other business activity, okay? We recommend really keep it separate, start fresh. Um, unless if you have a situation, let's just say if it's like a holding company that's not doing anything and you follow all these other conditions in the ownership structure, then that's probably okay. But I would not recommend using other previously run corporations to run your, your, your uh, PREC. Another uh, question I get asked a lot, and I'm glad Rico, Rico clarified this, was professional liability insurance. 
So PREC is technically not covered under RICO's liability insurance since, and it kind of makes sense because the PREC is not registered. However, the insurance coverage of the registrant, which you got to think, okay, as a realtor, what are you protected against? You still have your regular insurance with RICO, your professional liability insurance. So that would remain unaffected. So the PREC itself, it doesn't give you that legal protection as a normal corporation would, like similar to a professional corporation, but your, but your current insurance with RICO, uh, that would still stay intact. Um, this is more of a non-legal account. Well, I guess kind of a bit of a legal thing, but it's not really accounting related, but I just want to also mention it. Uh, RICO is also, uh, sorry, not RICO. The regulations have actually expanded on advertising terms. So now uh, brokers, so I mean, other than the broker of record and salespeople, they can now use the following terms to identify themselves. So you can now identify yourself in advertising as a real estate agent. So that's for brokers and salespeople. Uh, realtor, which is the more common one that's used. Uh, broker, real estate agent. So if, if you're a broker, you can use that now. You can also call yourself a realtor broker. Or if you're a salesperson, you can use the term realtor salesperson. So all these uh, terms are now allowed in your advertising. So I guess, Neil, maybe you just want to uh, summarize the overall advantages and then I'll, I'll take it off from the next point. Sure. Yeah, so as we discussed, the, the, the biggest advantage here is this tax deferral, okay? So even people with more modest levels of income, you know, middle incomes, and especially the higher your income is, like we said, the main advantage here now is instead of your income right now hitting your personal tax return right away and you have no choice, <clears throat> right now, um, once you have your PREC, your commission income will go into your PREC, the tax rate's 12.2%, and you only need to take out money from your PREC that you really need for your personal living. And every leftover dollar you leave in your PREC, you pay that 12.2% instead of paying 53% or whatever. Who knows if that's going to keep increasing because um, the government has incurred so much debt in the past year. <clears throat> so um, the tax deferral really is your biggest advantage here. Also, the income splitting, like we said, the non-equity shares that you know, can be owned by family members, adult children, not under 18, okay? That's a big no-no, but once they're over 18, and spouses. So if you have family members with lower income or zero income, there might be an opportunity to split income with them. Now, another advantage is this lifetime capital gains exemption. Some of you may or may not be familiar with this, but what this means is when a small business owner who operates through a corporation sells their business, if they sell the shares of their corporation to sell the business, usually when you sell a business or any asset, you have a big capital gain. Whatever you sold it for minus what it costs is a gain and that gain is tax. Half of it is tax, capital gains. But if you sell shares of your small business corporation, the government gives this what we call a lifetime exemption. It's right now 883,000. That keeps going up with inflation every year a little bit. So let's say you have your PREC and you operate it for many years and then you come to retire, but, but you have like value there because there's a book of business, there's a client list, customer list, there's loyalty, goodwill, and you want to sell it. You, maybe you want to sell your practice to an, a young agent. Um, well, now you could sell it with this big capital gains exemption and not have to pay tax on the gain. Also limited liability. Uh, operating now through a corporation just gives you a, a separate layer of protection. Your personal assets um, are separate from the PREC. They're not in the PREC. So there's just more uh, protection, but that's something you could discuss with a lawyer. A corporate lawyer can explain how that works. So keep in mind, this is just a reminder. HST, this doesn't really change. You still have to collect HST on the commissions, or I should say the PREC will collect HST on the commissions and the PREC will file an HST return. Once you incorporate a corporation in Ontario, so you get your articles of incorporation, um, and that's a service we're going to offer, which we'll talk about at the end of the presentation. But what happens is within a week or so, the CRA will mail you automatically a business number, a nine digit business number. So the HST number you have right now as your for self-employed realtor that you're using right now would actually close down. You would shut down that HST number. Your corporation will get a new business number. 
And once you have that business number, you can open up the HST account in your PREC. Um, so the PREC files an HST return, the PREC will file a corporate tax return. And what we always recommend, I recommend to every single one of my clients, none of my clients listen to me. Well, I should say some of them listen to me. Um, but I always tell my clients, when you collect HST, it's not your money. You have to set it aside. It's the government's money. You're their tax collector. They don't pay you to be their tax collector. You're an unpaid tax collector You're doing this work for them. I don't know how we have allowed this. It doesn't make any sense. But you are a tax collector. You're collecting HST. Set it aside. Uh, that, this is the same whether you're self-employed, whether you have the PREC. This doesn't change. So it's, this is just a reminder. And installments, if you owe more than, I'm sure a lot of you have to pay when you're self-employed, you pay HNC installments throughout the year, you pay personal tax installments. So the PREC might also have to make corporate tax installments, but you probably won't have any personal tax installments anymore um, if you're getting paid a salary, because when you get paid a salary, the tax is deducted directly from the PREC. Uh, but we'll explain all that when we work individually with each client, we you know guide you on that. Okay, so let's... What's next? Let's keep going here. Okay, so what we're offering at Realty Tax is uh, Stephen and I have teamed up. We've both been doing this for years in our separate practices, but Stephen uh, came up with this very nice idea to specialize and help realtors. So we're going to offer this all-in-one solution. Remember now with your PREC, your corporation, the corporation has to do bookkeeping. I'm sure you all do some form of bookkeeping right now, even as self-employed, because you have to keep track of all your expenses and HST. What we're going to do is take care of everything for you monthly on probably most likely QuickBooks online, which we find to be the most user user friendly. And uh, we'll, we'll, we're just going to take care of everything. So that's your personal tax returns, the PREC corporate tax returns, HST return, the T4 for salary or T5 for dividend, which you have to file. We're obviously going to send you reminders when your taxes are due. So you never pay anything late. Um, so we're going to be this all in one solution. And of course we're cloud-based hundred percent online, no meetings. And that was even before COVID my clients who are in this, uh, webinar right now, know I forbid in person meetings. Um, and we're, we just find it inefficient. So we're going to set everyone up on a cloud-based efficient paperless solution, uh, where you really don't have to worry about anything. So no more Excel documents, and keeping track of your receipts that way, that's just so inefficient. It's, it's a waste of your time. It's a waste of our time. Um, so we're gonna transition you to like nice, efficient cloud-based internet software. And we're gonna have fixed fees that we're gonna agree upon up front, and, and you'll pay monthly automatic, so you don't have to worry about a big surprise bill at the end of the year. Um, so you could look at our website, realtytax.ca. There's a few articles up there already about this, about Prex. And you should subscribe. Uh, there's a subscribe button at the top for more updates. Um, I'll let Stephen take over and explain yeah. what's going to happen in the next week or two. Yeah, for sure. And actually, just to add to Neil's point about our service offerings, one other thing that we'd also be providing um, is actual reference to a lawyer to get the initial incorporation set up. Right. So we have been working with a few lawyers on telling them, saying, look, we're going to have a lot of realtors coming in that are gonna need incorporation. So we'll be able to work with them, get a favorable rate, but also ensure the quality is there. So um, so just wanna also mention that as well as part of the process. So as far as next steps, you're probably thinking, okay, now I know a lot more about PREX, hopefully. <laughs> um, what do I do now? Should I call you guys up and get this set up and let's start today and whatever? I would say, and I'm taking the side of being a little bit conservative here, I'm going to say for a little bit, let's just let the dust settle. So as we were just talking about, there's a lot of things, well, I don't want to say a lot of things, but a few points that are, I think are key, which could affect the structure of the initial in, uh, incorporation of the PREC, particularly as Neil was talking about this indirect ownership. We both said, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> so uh, so basically that is one thing that we would still want to, you know, actually we um, today, Funny enough, I will be speaking to the Ministry of Government Services to get more clarification on that definition. Um, because again, that's coming right from the regulations. Um, also, there's other things like, for example, like the definition of employed. Does that really mean like self-employed? Does it mean like employed where you get source deductions taken off? Um, and then also, as you know, as we were saying at the beginning too, there's that whole 
um, agreement that needs to happen between the brokerage and the PREC. And I'm sure for a lot of brokerages, you would want some kind of template from RICO. So that way you don't have to come up with the stuff on your own. So there's a lot of things that still need to be worked out. As I said, this regulation came out yesterday. I never tell people to rush, let the dust settle a bit. Probably gonna still see, get some more updates here and there. But another thing you can also do, as Neil was just saying, subscribe to our website. So if you go to realtytax.ca, there's a little red thing on top where it says subscribe. Um, and you can click on that and that will add you to our mailing list. So as these updates come about, we can inform you all about what's what's happening. Um, and everything you should also consider too is ha start having that conversation with your brokerage or your broker of record about personal real estate corps. As I said, the brokerage is not obligated to pay you through a PREC, but I think it's important that you at least start talking about it to say if they're open to, to, to changing your agreements, okay? So it is a very important thing and I think it's good if you uh, start doing that now. And the last most important thing is reach out to us. So as we said, no, in, I mean, we should say this, no individual tax situation is the same for each realtor, okay? Some of you on the personal tax side, you only have, let's say, like a few slips to report. Some of you have 10 rental properties. And then the amount of commission you're earning right now also varies, right? So um, the important, what I'm trying to stress here is that it's really important that you have a conversation with us so we understand um, more about what's going on in your situation is the P rec how much so essentially like you know we'll ask we have to answer questions like how much will the you know the P rec save for you how much will admin fees be because I mean as I said we have fixed monthly rates but again it's not a set rate because everyone's different right so if you want to start getting that uh, done uh, you can also go to our website as well and there's a thing at the bottom where it says contact us you can put in your information uh, or you can just reach out to me and Neil directly. Our, our emails are on the slide and we can start having that conversation with you. So I think that's the end of our slide deck. Um, should we open, should we unmute everyone and they can ask questions? I think we can. I just don't know how to unmute everybody. Okay. <laughs> Actually, there's two things in the, the chat here. I just wanted to just uh, start off. Um, thanks. That was a, oh, someone says they gave. All pros sent a question. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can I take money earned this year from commissions that's sitting in my bank account? No, and them I wish, I wish you could, but you can't. <laughs> no, unfortunately, no, the, the issue with that is that because when that money was earned, it was earned as a sole proprietor. So when, when you're saying, well, the money's sitting in another corporation, it's not earned by that corporation yet. Okay. So, right. so we just got to be careful about that. Uh, however, if you needed to inject funds into your corporation to sustain expenses that are going on in the corp, of course, and we would just, I mean, definitely that would need to happen at some point because but, there but could that's be a not lag revenue. of one. Sorry. That's not, that's not revenue. Exactly. That's not, that's yeah. not revenue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, sorry. I'm just going down here. Um, I don't see any questions that were raised. If someone wants to type, but I'm just trying to find a way to unmute everybody. Uh, audio settings. In the meantime, you can go to grumpyaccountant.ca to learn more about my book, about massively simplifying the Canadian tax system. It's a fun read. It's easy to read. It reads like a novel, like The Wealthy Barber. Grumpyaccountant.ca. Okay. Are the rules about the name of the corporation? Stephen, do you want to answer that? Uh, the name of the corporation. So I, I believe I, I touched that on one of my previous slides. Um, as I was saying that they're not putting a naming restriction on that corporation. However, you just got to keep in mind is that when you are registering your corporation and you have to go under the, you know, the provincial nuance search. So again, if you have a lawyer set up your corporation, they'll, one of the things they'll do is they'll check to make sure that corporation name can be used. So sometimes let's just say, if you want to set up saying, oh, XYZ Realtor Inc., Right, and you're thinking that's a great name. I'm going to use that. And then another realtor had already set that up, who was a, maybe five minutes ahead of you. <laughs> Unfortunately, then you wouldn't be able to use that name because by law you cannot have two provincial corporations with the same name. So just that's that's my take on it. Oh, sorry, that's that's what the Rico has said. But um, the um, but as far as the actual naming to use to say does it have to say P Rec or whatever? Uh, Rico has not put a condition on that from what we've seen so far. I wonder if thousands of name searches are going to crash their website. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Angela asks, can a pre-existing corp be used? I think it can, right? Uh, it yeah, so, can... so, so as I was saying, Rico does allow it. However, as I was saying in the slides, you've got to be careful about that structure of that new corporation. Oh, sorry, of that old corporation you have. Right. Because 
if let's just say you and your spouse are shareholders, right, of voting shares, then technically that's breaking the regulations for a PREC. Because as I said, the voting shareholder must be the registrant and the spouse has to have non-voting shares. So it is allowed, RICO is allowing it. Um, however, again, you gotta be careful about that structure. We've always recommended from day one, we says really, if it's a separate mm -hmm. business line, have it, have it separately run, unless if your previous corp was a, uh, was a shell company. And remember the, the pre-existing corp, if you're using it for other business activities, then you can't really use it for the PREC because the PREC can only do the real estate income, right? So you got to be careful with that as well, I think. Right, right, exactly. Um, so I'm just gonna see. All Pro is well, actually, asking. Did, sorry, I just realized, the thing I could say is, is uh, all, ask all to unmute. So I'm, I'm putting okay, it out there. there. If anyone wants yeah. to talk, they can probably just click it, but. Uh, all, we have a question from All Pro. Any major difference deductions allowed in the corp compared to personal? So actually not really. Every expense that you can claim as a self-employed individual, you can basically claim in the corporation. It's the same expenses. So all legitimate business expenses can be claimed in the corporation, um, just like you do now for self-employed. There's no huge difference there, I think. Um, we have another question here. It says, hi, I'm a corporate law clerk with extensive experience in professional corporations. I believe that Indirect ownership will be very similar to currently with other existing other PCs. Indirect ownership will be through hold codes. Ah, here we oh, go. So there, there you go. So that could be one thing. Yeah. Or as a trustee shareholder holding non-voting shares for a minor child looking for right. that confirmation. Yeah. Um, and sorry, there's a question here. Will, will there be any governing body to issue certificates of authorization as in other types of PCs? Hold on, Stephen, before you answer that, about the trustee holding the non-voting shares, uh, that was explicit in the regulations, actually. I remember reading that, that the, the non-voting shares can be held by a family member and a trust. So that's, we, we know that's in the regulations. Yeah, and I will say it's kind of interesting because in BC, they've actually, as, as we were looking at it yesterday, in BC, their regulations actually state the word corporation as a potential non-voting shareholder, while here in Ontario, we're using this word called indirect ownership. So that is something that I wish I could say I know the answer to, but as I was saying, my slides, we don't know. It's a big, what the hell does that mean kind of thing. So um, so that's what we, do, we don't know yet. And then the question about certificates of authorization, unfortunately, I do not know that either, but it's a great question. I, and I'd be happy to bring it up with uh, the uh, individuals in the government who I'll be speaking to pretty soon. I had another question, uh, Shen messaged me privately. So as a realtor, how do I take money out of the hold co uh, to invest in more real estate? Some of he, people, uh, you know, purchase whatever type of real estate, condos, whatever. So there's two, well, if you leave the money in the hold co, you can invest through the, the hold co and that way you, you don't have to take it out of the hold co to invest, the hold co invests in the real estate. And that way you don't take that personal tax hit. As soon as you take money out of the PREC to your personal hands or out of the hold cone to your personal tax return, you're going to get that big personal tax hit. So the advantage here with the PREC is you could, you, you actually leave the money in the hold co and you have the hold co invest in, in the real estate in the, in the corporation's name. Um, so that's generally where the tax advantage will, I think will happen. Sounds good. Any other questions? I'm sure, um, you know, um, I, I definitely know for sure there's probably a lot of that are on people's minds and I mean, it may take some time to digest as well, all this stuff. So um, we are also trying to keep this an open communication. So even um, if, you know, you haven't thought of really fully your, your question, you can always email us too. We'd be happy to, to try to answer your question as best as possible. Any more questions? Don't be shy. And as I said, this will also be recorded. So in case, if, um, I'm not sure if anyone here brought in their friends or whatever, if they had to drop out of the session, we'll be, we'll be sharing the link after um, the session as well. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, someone asked me, will we be sharing the recording with everyone? Yes. So basically, okay. uh, the answer to that is we will. So the people in the session, yes. And then also the people that sent us their email to saying, please register me. But even if they're not on the session, we will be uh, sharing that with them as well. OK. 
Okay. Steven, I think we went through everything. Yeah, right? yeah, I think else? we went through everything. Yeah. Um, firstly, again, I'd like to thank you all. This was quite a few people that attended today. Thank you all for attending this morning. Um, you know, as I said, this is something that's still evolving. So, you know, but we're happy to at least um, uh, make you aware of the regulations. We know that, and by the way, I was also going to comment, we, we noticed that with TREB, they did their also their, their, their video, not, and again, not to talk anything bad about TREB, but I think that they were focused on the stuff that's pre-regulation. So um, I would say, if you're kind of confused about what they presented in us, take ours. And again, I, I have some bias here, but take what we're saying because that is based on off of the new regulations. And, uh, and yeah. I'm sure they'll put out another video. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're, 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 as I said, there's going to be a lot more coming over the next few days because as I said, like this question about indirect ownership, what is that? Right. So, um, so that is, will be clarified. I'm sure within about a week or so we'll get more information and we'll be sharing it to all our subscribers. I got one more question privately from someone. Sure. Um, once the once they know for sure they can open the prec, which I think they can now technically, right? Yes. How long does it take to open? So actually, technically, you can go online um, and and open an Ontario corporation. It just takes a few minutes, really, to the incorporation. But because it's a and then and then it's open. You have the articles, and then the CRA. You need a few days or maybe a week. Let's say five, six business days for the CRA to send you the business number, and then you can open the HST account. Once you have that, you'd be able to um, make the agreement with your brokerage. So it'll probably take a couple of weeks until you get it really all up and running. But again, I wouldn't, and it's, it's not that we have a bias here because we have a lawyer that we're gonna be doing incorporations for the realtors. I wouldn't necessarily try to incorporate yourself because there is very specific wording here um, and you'll need to do a name search. And so, it's better to just have a lawyer do it from the start, make sure it's done properly, especially if you're going to be issuing other types of shares to other people. Um, so probably the whole process takes a couple weeks until you really can get it up and running, maybe a bit more than that. So, but it's not like it'll take months and months, right? It's just a couple of weeks here. And I also got a question. Can the PREC hold other investments aside from real estate? Steven, do you want to take that one? Uh, sorry, the question was, can a prec hold other stuff other than real estate? It's the answer a, like is, what, what investments can the prec hold? Okay. And can it hold other investments other than real estate? Um, basically the way how the regulations are stated right now, they're saying that it, you can only run real estate activities and you cannot hold any other properties and trust or anything like that. So the answer is um, you basically, unless if it's cash, I mean, my, my, my uh, interpretation of that is that, um, unless if it's cash that's earned directly in the realty business, uh, you cannot hold those kind of assets. Or if it, let's just say if it's um, other assets used in your realty business as well. So let's just say if you buy like office furniture, equipment, or uh, computers that's used for the realty business, that, that should be fine. Um, now, and this is what we were saying too, is that if you're thinking, well, if I want to hold other investments or, I mean, and my take on it, I'm sure also if you earn, let's say like a small amount of interest in the PREX, just say you put it in a, like a, like a checking account that earns 0.0001% or whatever, um, that should be fine. But then the question is, okay, if you're earning this money in the PREX and then it's like, you want to put it into an investment, right? Like a rental property and whatever, how do you do it? And this is what, what we're talking about is saying, well, you could have that opportunity to have a holding company attached to your personal real estate corporation. Again, we don't know for sure yet because of this word called indirect ownership. But if, if, if they're saying indirect ownership could include a corporation, then you can have a structure where you have your hold co also own shares of your PREC, and then you can have investments done through your holding company. The other option is in case that's not allowed is that you could personally make investments, but then the problem is that any money you take out of your personal real estate corporation, you would pay some tax on that through a salary or a dividend. Um, one question was also asked here, just noticed, will you be able to register a federal corp and obtain an Ontario corporation business number? Um, again, I think the regulations are pretty strict on this. They're saying it has to be an Ontario corporation. So I'm not sure um, yeah, why it, you want it, to do a federal corp and then an Ontario business number. Maybe Neil knows more about this. Well, yeah, it's an Ontario corporation, but remember when I say business number, you'll, You'll get an Ontario Corporation number. That's your Ontario Corporation. But the business number is from CRA. That's separate from the Ontario Corporation number. So even though you have a CRA business number, 
it doesn't mean it's a federal corporation. The CRA business number is attached to the Ontario corporation. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't, um, you're, you're not registering a federal corporation here. I guess um, I'm not sure if there's any other questions coming in. I guess I guess we'll start concluding since we're almost at the, the one hour mark. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us today. As I said, this recording will be provided uh, to all of you, plus any other people that registered. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, you know, as I said, as far as next steps, it's probably a good idea if you want to start assessing your situation and say, can you really save with the PRAC? reach out to us because when, when you speak to us, we're going to be asking questions about like your personal tax situation as well um, and what goes on there. So it's very important not to think, well, it's like, you know, either you make it or, or a certain amount or you don't make a certain amount. Actually, one common question we get, and, you know, this is one thing that I think some people may be thinking is like, well, is there a minimum threshold to say, should I start up a PREC? Like, you know, some, some real estate agents make 30,000 net income, some make 100,000, some make 300,000. Where do you draw the line? And really what it comes down to is how much are you drawing out of your corporation for your personal living expenses or leisure or whatever. And what I mean by that is let's just say if you're only making, let's say like 30,000 of, of, of income from your realty business, but let's just say you have other sort, let's just say you also work another job where it pays for all your living expenses and you can have this realty business where you're using that as your savings right now. Um, or as a, as a tool for investment purposes or like, you know, whatever down the road, then you can still benefit by having a personal real estate corp because you're not draw or, you know, you're not drawing out all your money or drawing out very little to sustain your living expenses. So you still got that tax deferral opportunity. So anyway, that's all I want to mention again. Uh, thank you all for attending. And Even, uh, we, we should also mention um, we're happy to do as a, a private free presentation for your own brokerage. If you have other agents yes. or other groups of people that you think might benefit from this information, we're happy to set one up for your own brokerage or your own group of agents. So feel free to spread the word and yeah. uh, we'd be happy to schedule that as well. Yeah. And as I said, uh, you know, this is something that's still evolving. So if you tell us saying, Hey, can you guys present to us in let's say like two weeks, we may have more information at that time. So I, it's uh, it's definitely valuable if you want to have your team uh, want to if you want us to present virtually on, on Zoom or whatever system you guys have set up in your in your organization. So anyway, thank you all and uh, go have a great day. Okay, take care. Bye bye.